Hey everyone, so I'm back in my car. My daughter has fallen asleep in the car again, so here I am. I have a lot less time at this time in her life to sit down and plan and film videos, so I'm going to do them in little pockets of time like this when I have them. So um, I just had something on my mind that I wanted to talk about, and I never mean to offend anyone. I never mean to sound condescending or sound like a know-it-all absolutely not i'm just speaking from the years of experience that i've had in this psychiatric drug harm space and the thousands of people i've talked to both you know in severe states and in recovery and post recovery and i want to explore mitochondrial dysfunction so i made a video earlier um a few months ago about how i took a tinnitus course and knock on wood, I believe that this course has resolved pretty much all of my tinnitus. I really don't notice it anymore. Um, I can be sitting in a totally quiet room and I don't hear it. I don't believe that I've habituated to it. I, I believe that I've reversed all or most of it. Um, yeah, and when I do hear it, it, like I hadn't heard it in about two weeks, it's like a one out of ten. Um, so I think I'm on the way to fully reversing it and the course that I took the theory of it is that mito uh, sorry tinnitus visual snow vertigo Meniere's disease and uh, there's one other condition that he clusters in are all related to mitochondrial dysfunction and I have been putting his course recommendations into practice and I believe that that is the reason why my tinnitus has pretty much disappeared. Um, and I, I just thought this could be valuable information for other people because many people in withdrawal or on the drug experience tinnitus. It is so, so, so common and he addresses autotoxicity from medications in his course. Um, there's many causes of tinnitus according to him and because they all seem so unrelated like noise trauma and pregnancy and stress and autotoxic medications, how can this all cause the same condition? And so his theory behind tinnitus and those related clustered conditions is mitochondrial dysfunction. And the reason I bring it up is because again, a lot of people in withdrawal and who have experienced negative experiences with these drugs um, experience those symptoms. And also again, um, I'm just kind of speaking about my experiences and what I've kind of gathered is when I have coached people who are in severe akathisia, one of the things that came to my mind was these people look very similar to people with autism. And the reason I say that is because I was in the autism field, career field for about 10 years prior to this withdrawal thing happening to me and I worked with all severities of autism mostly those severe cases and they had comorbid um, conditions and there was a lot of stimming so self-stimulative behavior and it looked similar to akathisia in the sense that you know there's akathisics a lot of times you know they're pacing they're rocking they're tapping they're you know so sensitive to light and sound they're wearing sunglasses and headphones and this is a lot of times what we see or at least what i saw when i was working with adults and youth and children on the autism spectrum now i'm not saying that people in withdrawal have autism but there are overlapping similarities for sure um, i've seen people lose the ability to speak so get um not ataxia that's not the right word it's not dyslexia, oh my goodness, I can't think of the word right now, aphasic, um, from withdrawal or adverse reactions to these drugs, lose their ability to speak, not permanently, but temporarily. And again, that's similar to what can happen in severe autism. So, so and I have followed people and been following people and been looking into the stories of those who have turned their child's autism around, um, severe nonverbal autism. Um, and one of the things that they express and talk about is mitochondrial dysfunction. And so I thought this could be helpful for people in this community. 
So mitochondrial dysfunction is a complex thing. And again, everything in this is complex. And there's there's a lot that goes into it. And so without giving the whole tinnitus course away, because it, there's so much to it, I can't remember it all. But the course that I took, it, it narrows it down. So you take this mini test kind of, not kind of, but you take this mini test within the course that outlines what is likely contributing to your mitochondrial dysfunction and there's like 40 different things so some of the things the way he breaks it down are day-to-day -day things that you're doing in your life that are maintaining that dysfunction and then you go and look into past things that were contributing to the mitochondrial dysfunction bucket so he he calls it a domino theory but it's similar to my own theory of like a bucket um and I'm not saying that this is the answer, but I'm saying it's just, it could be one piece of the puzzle. So there's many different things that, depending on your results of this test, you would work on to fix your mitochondrial dysfunction. And so, for example, some of the things are um, grounding. So specifically getting outside and grounding. I'm not talking about grounding mats and grounding devices you can buy online grounding outside, um, getting as much sunlight as possible, like exposing your bare eyes and your skin to sunlight, as much sunlight as possible, as safely possible. Um, it could be changing your diet. So he talks about, and I, again, like some of this you can take with a grain of salt because I think it can become obsessive if you worry about all of these things. But he does talk about um, oxalates and so vegetables and stuff that are high in oxalates can contribute to mitochondrial dysfunction in some people. It depends depends on the health of your organs and all these different processes in your body. So he advocates for more of a like low carb, no grain, higher meat diet. And again, this won't apply to everybody, but it could be something that is contributing to your bucket, so to speak. Um, he talks about like dry fasting. That's something that he, he brings up a lot in his book and in his course, um, intermittent fasting, dry fasting, um, cold showers, so similar to ice baths, um, reducing your EMF exposure. Because I had noticed for myself, when I spent a lot of time on my computer or phone, um, I noticed my tinnitus would go up. And someone had made a comment on one of my videos that I should be not wearing Bluetooth headphones. in Because I used to wear them in my videos and they were saying how oh, that's probably making your tinnitus worse. And in my specific case, it was. So I don't use those headphones anymore. And I think that's one of the things that have helped me to reverse this condition or almost completely reverse it. And so, and there's many other things. So those are just some of the day-to-day -day things that could be maintaining the mitochondrial dysfunction leading to tinnitus and related conditions. Then as far as like, past things that could have been filling the bucket so he goes into dental work he goes into mold exposure he goes into parasites he goes into um, i'm trying to remember off the top of my head um it, toxic relationships which sounds crazy um, but he has helped people resolve their tinnitus by fixing or getting out of those toxic relationships again it kind of ties into my theory of a stressor bucket that just builds and builds and builds and genetics like depending on if you have the MTHFR gene mutation. Um, there's other ones that could be contributing, but I, I believe that genetics is only a very small part of it and a very small part of all of these conditions. I think epigenetics is where we're at as far as how and why are we turning on these genes that are causing these problems. Um, and so that then this is where you look into your day-to-day -day life and maybe things in the past that could have been adding to the bucket so he talks about drug use and alcohol use and there's all these things that he dives into it's it's very interesting and you might look at it initially or hear about it and be like this is just a bunch of hokum but once I started really like diving into the specifics and doing it myself it's something that I've noticed has made a difference so this could be something you might want to explore again I've seen people who have turned severe autism symptoms around and also tinnitus who have addressed this mitochondrial piece and you can look online and find a bunch of information on mitochondrial and how it provides you know it powers the cell it provides the energy the ATP and you need this energy a certain level of energy within the cell to power things and make things run smoothly like your ears to function properly your nerves to function properly 
um, it's just another piece of the puzzle that you might want to explore. And uh, I was chatting with someone today about that and about their specific history that maybe is tying into some of the problems they're having now since psychiatric drugs. So just something to look at if you've ever went down this path and you have anything to add to the conversation let me know in the comments and um, if you've explored this avenue at all because I am seeing similarities and just I'm trying to tie the pieces together and give people as much I guess healing modalities or healing tools as possible so and also I've noticed there's a great need in this community for connection to each other so if you're looking to connect with others that are going through this um, at the same time as you and you need to connect with people who understand firsthand you might want to just like make a comment on that drop your email if you're not comfortable with that you can you can email me um, my email is melissadoncoaching at gmail.com and I can start connecting people to each other because I know for myself, it was super helpful in the past and for other people, it has been as well. So let me know your thoughts on this topic and uh, I hope you're doing well and I'll see you next time. Bye.